As professionals, there's one thing we can't control without shooting landscape imagery that we plan to sell to clients, and that's the weather. Poor lighting conditions can result in flat frames, and this in turn can severely limit the selling potential of an image. Of course, pro photographers know that by shooting in RAW file format, we're tipping the scales back in our favour, and giving ourselves more tolerance to edit the tonal data and improve the photo. Whether that be rescuing highlights from an overblown sky, or revealing detail in shadows from an underexposed area of the frame. But it doesn't stop there, as Affinity Photo 2's raw conversion features can help inject much needed colour. Help you as the photographer take control of the colour balance in the frame, correcting it to match what you saw with your own eyes, or manipulating it to add much needed atmosphere. You can also address any noise issues in the frame, and more creative touches such as contrast balance. All these features help push the photographer in one direction, to polishing and enhancing a frame that would otherwise be headed for the recycle bin. And more images that reach a standard you're happy with mean more can be sold via stock agencies, via your own website or even via print sales, boosting your bottom line even further. So let's see how this technique comes together. Once you open a RAW file in Affinity Photo 2, by default you'll be instantly transported to the software's developer persona. You can see that highlighted in the top left hand side of the interface. On the right hand side of the interface are a number of tabs unlocking a huge amount of options. We're going to start with the basic tab. And the first job we're going to do is maximising the dynamic range in the image by selecting the shadows and highlights box. Drag the highlight slider to the left to recover detail from the sky, and then drag the shadow slider to the right to reveal any shadows in underexposed areas of the frame. One of the consequences of adjusting the highlights and shadows in your image is that you can often leave the frame looking a little bit flat, which is certainly the case in our example, but don't worry, this can be easily fixed by further refining the exposure. Start by heading to the black point, and adjusting that slider, and then the brightness and that will inject more life into the frame. Remember to be considerate and not go too far with this part of the effect or it could compromise image quality. With the exposure level sorted, it's time to ramp up the detail in the frame. Progress the technique by locating the clarity slider and then dragging it to the right. Again, don't take this too far or you'll ruin the image quality. So for my image, around 30% seems to work well. Next, head up and select the details tab and select detail refinement. You can now drag out the radius and the amount until you're happy with the refinement in the image. Now that we've sorted the exposure and the detail, it's time to pep up the color in the frame. Go back to the basics tab and head to the saturation and vibrant sliders and drag these to the right. Now again, this is all about subtlety. You don't want to go too far, but you do want to inject color into the frame. So that looks about right for now. This before and after shows the progress that we're making. In this side of the image, we've drawn more detail back into the highlights and we've added a lot of color too, while this side, the original raw image, is looking flat. For our next job, we're gonna head and select the white balance option. This can be used to recreate the color temperature you saw with your own eye, or you can be a little bit experimental and be creative, adjusting the color temperature to how you want your creative vision to be. So I'm gonna drag the slider to the right to add some more warmth, but then I'm going to change the tint and try and add a bit more purple to this. And that really fits better with the sort of sunset look that I was going for. Now, in our previous step, we were making global adjustments that affect the whole frame. But to really take advantage of Affinity Photo 2's raw conversion features, the next step is to make some local adjustments. Head to the left-hand side of the interface and you'll see a number of options. The one we're going to select is the Overlay Gradient tool, and the keyboard shortcut for this is G. Head to the top of the frame, hold and drag down. And you'll see your gradient is evident on the frame via a red overlay. Now with that selected, I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments. Firstly, I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little, just to add some drama to the sky. I'm gonna ramp up the contrast, and I'm gonna play about with that white balance again. And I think actually I'll add a bluer tint. I think that works quite well. And because we've got some wet sand here that would mirror the sky, I think what I'll do is drag a similar overlay to the bottom, but I'll just reduce the blue element because that was a bit too strong. So I'm just adding some orange in there. So to exit out of the overlays, I'm gonna click develop. Now I'm back in the photo persona, and this is where I can add some extra adjustments. So I'm gonna head over to the layers panel, 
find the adjustments icon, which is identified by a half black, half white circle. Click on it, and I'm going to select a curves boost. So I'm going to draw out a rough S shape on the histogram, just to add some extra injection of atmosphere and drama into the frame. So this is how the original image looked, a flat raw file with a bit of potential, but lots of work to do. And here is our finished image, full of color, full of punch and far, far more sellable. So all we need to do now is to export the file by going up to file, scrolling down to export and saving the file in your chosen format, whether that be a JPEG, TIFF or PSD. Thanks for watching. Have fun converting your raw files in Affinity Photo 2 and I'll see you next time.